Welcome back. I'm Barry Craig. Our guest today usually comes on the program to talk about environmental issues, politics, but today we're going to have something a little different. We're going to have a musical interlude with Mark Donham. Welcome to the program. Wow, thanks for having me. It is a little different, isn't it? It is a little different, but I think it'll be fun. Yeah. Now, one of the songs that you wrote made it on Prairie Home Companion. Mm -hmm. So how did that song get from rural Pope County, Illinois to National Public Radio and Prairie Home Companion? Well, I was listening to uh, Prairie Home Companion uh, and it, it was the week before Valentine's Day and Garrison Keillor at, near the end of the show said, oh, we're going to have this Valentine's Day contest, song and poem contest and just go to our website, but you have to have your entries uh, um, entered by Friday. And I thought, hmm, that's kind of a short turnaround, and it really, he hadn't announced it in the weeks before, so it was probably somebody's harebrained scheme to let's do this, you know, and so I thought they'd do it. And, and uh, so I went to their website, I think it was on, on Monday, I, came, I was in town and I was on a high-speed connection, and so I went to their website, and they just had a little form there for the, in the, on the contest page for uploading MP3s. I had this song, As Long As The Stars Shine, that I thought would really be good for Garrison to sing. I'd always thought he liked it, and I had a nice studio recording of it, and I had converted it into an MP3, and I had it on my computer, so I just uploaded it to his website and that was it and I didn't know you know he had oh and you also they had a form for pasting in the lyrics you had to send them the lyrics and they also had a little check box that would you be willing to say to to say who the song is for which I said I checked yes I would because that was one of the rules the song had to be written for somebody in mind and um so I did all that, uploaded it, and it said successfully uploaded, you know. And uh, so that, w that was basically how I entered. How did you come to write the song, and when did you write it? Well, you know, my wife Christy and I were trying to figure out exactly when I wrote it. And I'm not sure, but it's been a number of years ago, I would say. But since we moved here, um, I, maybe somewhere around 1990, I'd say. And you wrote it for her? Uh, yes, I wrote it for her. It was a love song. So. And so then, how did you discover that you had been discovered? Well, um, when I came home from work on Friday, and I got home, I stayed in town for a little bit, and got home, and uh, it was about 8 o'clock in the evening, and we have a caller ID on our phone, but, but no voicemail or answering machine, and there was a... I, I, the number for Minnesota Public Radio had called about 15 minutes before that. And uh, so I, su I suspected that it had something to do with the contest, because why else would they be calling me? Unless to, tell, to say, never send us another thing ever, please. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Go away. Erase your phone number from our memory. Garrison but, Keeler doesn't strike me as the kind of fellow who would do something. No, like me that, neither. Right. And, you know, of course, he's... He's one of my favorite people. And Christy and I actually had made a point of a couple of years ago, I think it was 2006, we went up to the Minnesota State Fair and saw Prairie Home Companion. It was part of a bigger trip. We went up to the Boundary Waters and such. And we thought, well, if all the places where, you know, to put this together, and we saw the time that he was going to be at the Minnesota State Fair, and we just decided to do it. And it was really an interesting evening to hang around the Minnesota State Fair and go see Prairie Home Companion. Mm -hmm. but, but anyway, so then they called back on Saturday and, and said that they were going to, they wanted to do this little interview with me about tell, telling them something about the song and a little bit about where I was from and that, which, which they did. And it kind of caught me by surprise. And I think the call on Friday was to kind of give me a heads up. And I'd, I didn't think I did the greatest interview, but I gave them enough and they only did a short sentence and and it was fine and then they did the song but my voice actually was on the radio show too which was kind of interesting mm -hmm. how'd the song sound on the radio well this the the they have a singer that's appearing more frequently on their show heather massey who's from the east coast 
and she sings with several groups, but probably the one that she's been on on a m- more of national exposure is one called the Whaling Whalen Jennings, and uh, she they for. Well, first off, you have to realize that that they had, I believe, it was eight songs that they picked, seven or eight from from the audience to perform, and the band performed them all. And so they and they didn't end end the contest entries till Friday. Now I don't know. You know, you would think, well, maybe once they really popped out at them, they were picking out all along and said this one's going to be in for sure. But they mean, you know, they they were getting up against the deadline and these were songs the, it's not like saying coming up with a chart of like obscure hank williams songs or something that you probably at least have heard before even though you maybe haven't played them but you would you would at least have in your mind how the song goes but these are brand new songs from people that are brand new lyrics and everything now of course they take music stands up there and read everything so the lyric part of it wasn't really a big obstacle but the band had to learn the music so they had all those new songs to learn and they divided them all up i I guess as far as the singers but anyway to 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 make kind of a short story long i guess this woman heather massey sang it and it, which w- she did a really fine job. I, I really appreciated the job she did. She sang it with a lot of feeling. And they all were singing along, af- along in the chorus. And I thought it was a real genuine liking of the song. And he gave it a... It, but she sang it from the... She didn't change the gender references. And, of course, it's written as a male to a female. And that was kind of interesting. But it worked. So... Anyway, it was it was uh, it was uh, interesting. It was the first time, really, that I ever heard one of my own songs played by another band. Uh, you know, at least in that kind of a venue. And so, I guess to a certain extent, that's kind of a benchmark. I, I mean, you know, in the songwriting business, you're considered a a you know an amateur until you actually get a publishing contract and get money. Somebody writes you a check for a song and. It doesn't even necessarily, I don't think, have to get on an album. It pro- probably if it gets recorded somewhere along the line. But you know, if you get a, if you have a publishing company, uh, I mean, a publishing contract to put you in a different category, and you know, but and I didn't make any money on this, but um, as as one of my songwriting friends in Nashville that's in the business said it, it certainly looks good on the resume you know it's somewhere sort of halfway between mm-hmm. those so it does it is a step for me as a songwriter mm-hmm. well why don't you without further ado uh, play the song play the song okay it's called uh, as long as the stars shine You're the best girl Your angels sing You're more than a lover You're more than a friend And I'm a better man Knowing you're mine And I'm gonna love you As long as the stars shine As long as the stars shine at night As long as the sun comes out each day As long as the robins come in spring As long as the mockingbird sings Long as there's clear mountain streams Long as a child sits and dreams well, it lasts a love so fine As long as the stars shine We'll be together Until the end Cause you're more than a lover You're more than a friend And it's so plain to see Two forever entwined And I'm gonna love you As long as the stars shine As long as the stars shine 
at night as long as the sun comes out each day as long as the robins come in spring as long as a mockingbird sings long as there's clear mountain streams as long as a child sits and dreams well it lasts a love so fine as long as the stars shine well it lasts a love so fine as long as the stars shine Thank you. That's certainly something an old married man can uh, can appreciate. That's very good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, That's the same song that got me in the Bluebird Cafe too. So, you know, that and it's not a it's not a e- e- easy thing really to. And I I still am kind of surprised, but you know, you go when if you, if you want to break in and you're an unknown, you. There's two ways to get in. One is a mon- Monday night, they have this open mic, and you go down and you put your name in a hat, and they usually have more people putting their names in than they have time, so you draw your name out, and you get to play two songs. But they also have this Sunday night thing that's by invitation only, and they let eight songwriters usually, new songwriters, play three songs. And uh, you audition to get in that rotation, and you have to go through some hoops. You you have to join the Nashville Songwriters Association if you live more than 100 miles out of Nashville. Uh, you have to call on a certain Friday during certain hours and get be one of the first 90 to call. And then you had go down there on a Sunday morning and you get to play one minute of one song, a verse and a chorus, with 89 other acts from basically from all over the country when I did it. I did it a couple of years ago. Wow. So anyway, that was a song I played, and all these people were, most of them were really good, and a lot of people play, you know, if you go down there, and if you forget the words, or totally miss a chord, you're, you're not going to get in that time after audition again, but if you play your one minute really clean, and what they're looking for is a really good hook, and a, a, a good differentiation between your verse and your chorus, and strong rhymes, and all that kind of stuff, but I didn't, you know, you, you don't know how people hear your song. And mm-hmm. so, you know, I went up there and I played, and I, I played it clean. And I played my verse and chorus, and I thought, oh, I did okay. But all these other people were getting them, and I thought, man, they're really good, and they're really good. And so um, after the thing, I told Christy, I said, man, I'll, I'll drop dead. That, that was my exact words. I'll drop <laughs> dead if I get in, and which I'm glad that part of it hasn't come true. But uh, uh, I was really surprised to get the letter saying, you know, congratulations, we're going to put you in the rotation. And they gave me a date, and I've gone back there three times now. Mm-hmm. And they'll let you in every six months mm-hmm. if they let you back. You have to, you, you, you play, and then between like one and two o'clock in the afternoon, or it's very hit and miss. A lot of times you can't get through because they only have one phone, and a lot of times in the early afternoon they only have one or two people there. So you're lucky to get somebody, and you have to call them back at these certain times and hope to get somebody and ask did you do good enough to get another date mm-hmm. and so so far i've come back i'm going back for the fourth time in august mm-hmm. and it's an experience to play there because so many really great people have played on that stage and the people it's always it's pretty much full and uh everybody's listening and so all that combined it's a pretty good test of your metal as a singer a songwriter mm-hmm. So. What's the history of the Bluebird Cafe? Because it's a real Nashville musical in- institution nowadays. You know, it's funny because it's down in, on Hillsboro Pike, south of the Green River Mall, and it's in a little strip mall. A Green Hills Mall. Green yes, Hills yes, Mall. Yes, I know exactly it's just where that about is. two blocks down on Hillsboro, uh, on the opposite side of the road, in this little strip mall. That if you didn't really know, know exactly it, you kind of drive yeah. drive by it. Sure. But, uh the, this woman, Amy, um, can't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not remembering her last name, but she, she founded it back about, I guess, you know, around 30 years ago, and she just really liked songwriters, and it just became the place. And then it got featured in, in the movie, Nashville. Right. And there's been a lot of, uh, it, it just has built up this sort of mystique, and they have really, you know, it is the, I mean, there's some other really great music clubs, 
down in Nashville. But f when it comes to songwriters, that's the the Bluebirds pretty much, the, you know, if you can get a headline show there. See, I mean, you know, the during the week they have these writers in the round. And and that's the next thing that if if I, you know, if could ever advance that would be the next thing is I'd move into a writers in the round which uh, would be really amazing if I could and you know mm -hmm. maybe who knows mm -hmm. it just who are some of the other songwriters that people would recognize their names that uh, that have gone through the bluebird well of course I always say you know Garth Brooks uh, um, um, Faith Hill uh, you know, people like that. Have, but there's also people like Rodney Crowell still plays there. Uh, um, uh, even even uh, um, Gary Nicholson and uh, Don Schlitz. He, Don Schlitz, of course, you know, wrote The Gambler and a bunch. I mean, his, his list of songs that he's had, number one songs, is As Long As Your Arm. And he does these shows there every so often called Don for a Dollar, where you can pay a dollar and he'll, he'll sing a bunch of his songs. Wow. So there's, you know, I mean, but you, you can go to their web. They have a website, you know, bluebirdcafe.com, and they have the schedule. And a lot of the names you wouldn't necessarily recognize if you weren't. And I don't really recognize them all, but you can bet that if they're doing writers in the round or getting a feature performance, you know, on a weekend or something, that 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 they're good. Mm -hmm. They've been in the business; they know people. And mm -hmm. play us a, a selection of your song. You select them, give us a little background, and just uh, take off. Well, um, I thought you know one thing. I thought I have I have this. I have a song. You know some. <clears throat> like you say, I often, I, I, I haven't been shy about being involved in community activities, and uh, so you know I have. But but it, it, and and I and I do have songs that are sort of political, but in, but my songwriting is focused more on sort of the personal side of life, and I guess you know maybe there's a reason for that. Uh, and my political songs haven't been like, don't cut that tree, don't cut that tree. They're more sort of poetic and, and, and I, you know, I mean, that's just sort of how it is. But, but um, <clears throat> I, ha I thought I might play this song that uh, it, I, it's, it was about a time in, it, and I moved here in 1980. And at that time, there was a booming music business in Paducah. I mean, there was like, I don't know, I, I, six or seven clubs or more, there might have been more, where you could hear a, a, it, ranging from a, a, a most excellent to a good band uh, six nights a week and probably another dozen clubs where you could hear bands on the weekends, like mostly like the Eagles and the Moose Club and stuff like that, that had bands on the weekends. And, and um, so... Uh, some some of the 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 two hottest bars were, you know, on um, uh, it's uh, I guess it's is it Jackson, where it goes across the railroad tracks, mm -hmm. and you know just on the uh, right hand side there. Well, was well, a motel? there's two across the right. Well, one one was the be it was the best in. in Best Western, and then mm -hmm. it became Inns USA, and across the street was Quality Inn. Mm -hmm. And anyway, at one time there were bars in there, and those mm -hmm. those bars would be r crowded all the time, and especially like in certain nights, like Wednesday and then the weekends. But even uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, there'd be decent crowds, and they had a house band, and you know, and usually it was four or five pieces, and they keep their equipment set up all the time. And they actually made enough money where these guys, that's all they did, was they were the house band. And so, you know, some of the, of course, if you wanted to work on the side, you could during the day. But a lot of these guys, that's all they did, because they could make enough money. Mm -hmm. And um, so being a lover of live music, we used to go out and hear them. I mean, it was great. You'd, you'd never cover charges to go in. You know, go in and have a beer and listen to a set, and um, and so, 
there are some really good dancers. And so I wrote a song about then that, so that, and this is kind of another one of those old, older songs dating back from about the time when I wrote As Long As The Stars Shine, but it's, it's called uh, Getting Around about a particular dancer that I thought was really good at the, uh, in USA. It's Wednesday night, the TV's getting old. She called up a friend, she got put on hold. So she decides to get in her car and go on down to the best Western barn. She knows there's a good chance She's gonna find somebody to dance with She likes a band, they got a good sound Yeah, she's just getting around Well, getting around the old dance floor Till the men can't do no more She's everybody's queen when she walks through the door What's been going down? She don't like to stay home. She likes getting around. She sits down on her favorite bar stool. She orders up a beer. She says to Johnny O, her favorite bartender, is Bobby here? Then she turns to see her best friend Lee. Well, coming from across the room, then the band starts playing, body starts swaying to a red-eyed country too. It's after midnight, she's on her way home. Nobody's with her, she's still alone. But she don't care, she's not sad. She's thinking about all the fun she had. Well, lots of guys would have her, no doubt. But that's not why she goes out. She goes to town to get unwound. Yeah, she likes getting around. Well, getting around the old dance floor till the men can't do no more. She's everybody's queen when she walks through the door. Getting around to catching up on what's been going down. She don't like to stay home. She likes getting around. But she don't like to stay home. She likes getting around. No, she don't like to stay home. She likes getting around. Very good. Anyway, that's a Paducah song. I, li I like that. Uh, we're uh, getting within five minutes, so we probably ought to. Before we go, though, I, I want you to tell us about the guitar. Uh, how you came, how you came by that guitar? Well, it's just it's a I I bought it at a junk store uh, outside of Anna, Illinois. Um, I don't about a year and a half ago, and it's a a Morris, which is a Japanese guitar maker who has learned his craft here in the United States. And, and when you bought it, it had dirt dauber nests. Yeah, and it had a couple strings on it, but. Anyway, it's turned out to be a really nice, I really like it a lot. I like it, I play it all the time now, and my other guitar is lonely. <laughs> 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 but that's just the way it is. Well, that's a, it, it, it's, it's got character. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice guitar. Um, probably got room for uh, maybe one more song. Okay. Uh, you, you, I thought you I'd choose. do one of my, one of my uh, uh, something I wrote recently about the area. That'll be good. Okay. And if we've got time, we can maybe squeeze in one more. We'll see how it goes. Okay, well, this one's called uh, Saturday Barn Dance. And so I just wrote this within the last, you know, I don't know, a couple, two months anyway. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm going to write a bluegrass album. That's what I'm, that's one of my projects now. And so anyway, this is one of those songs. It was a Saturday evening Old van pulled up outside the barn Three guys and two gals climbed out Carrying bass, fiddle, banjo, and guitar Old Bob comes out and says hi, y'all 
Everybody's ready for the show. Just give us a minute to get in tune. Then we'll be ready to go. And when they kicked off the very first song with the fiddle and guitar, it didn't take long for chairs to empty, dance floor fill, Saturday barn dance way up in the hills. When Devil's Dream is playing, no time for standing still. Saturday barn dance way up in the hills. Sometimes they dance in a circle. Sometimes they dance in a line. Sometimes they dance with one another. It's easy when the music's so fine. One more time around the floor. So tired, but you just can't stop. Give us a slow one like Tennessee Waltz. We just about to drop. And when they kicked off the very last song with the fiddle and guitar, it didn't take long for hooting and hollering, dance floor fill, Saturday barn dance way up in the hills. You might get a taste from a local still, Saturday barn dance way up in the hills. Very good. Uh, we're just about out of time. Uh, do you play locally anywhere? Where could someone hear I you? haven't. I played two. I played at uh, Etc. in December and February, but I haven't rescheduled any dates to play there. I used to play in bands around here, dance bands, uh, you know, years ago. Mm -hmm. But now I'm pretty much just focusing on the songwriting. But I, I'm thinking about trying to get out and starting to, you know, I've got, I've been writing a lot in the last few years and recording and it's like, well, it's not, it was fun and et cetera to try out the songs and, you know, I, I, I have to you know, chain people to their seats to make them listen to, <laughs> to, you know, all right, no, oh, yeah, I'm going to get that. you on this one. Oh, but, yeah, no, that. but, oh. but, uh, you know, it was, it was fun. It was, and I got a nice response and, and, uh, I did, I played, I played here uh, was it two two years ago at the um, the Western Kentucky Songwriters Association, oh. which is a chapter of the Nashville Songwriters Association, right. Right. Ha did a performance for the backstage mm -hmm. uh, pass series, and I played on that, and I actually played as long as the stars shine was one of the songs mm -hmm. that I played. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, we're out of time. You'll have to come back again when you write some more songs. We'll do this again, and you know maybe with a little luck, we can get some accompaniment from Professor David Nickel, who is quite a banjo player, I hear. Ooh. I'm Barry Craig. Thank you for joining us. My guest was Mark Donna. We'll see you next time.